Next, we're going to talk about using statistics to infer a single proportion. The whole idea of statistical inference is that it uses sample statistics to estimate population parameters. Recall that if the sample size n is large, then the sample proportion p hat is going to be close to the true proportion p. The larger the sample size, the better p hat estimates p. Two ways that we can estimate a parameter using statistics are by constructing confidence intervals and performing hypothesis tests. In this video, we're going to talk about confidence intervals. All right, this is a lot of information, so we're going to work through it slowly. Suppose that we know that a certain statistic is an unbiased estimator of a parameter that we want to estimate. We're going to take a sample of size n and calculate the statistic, which we call the point estimate, and denote PE. So what the PE is, is it is a single statistic that we've calculated from our sample. Then a confidence interval centered at the point estimate is the interval PE minus some number up to PE plus some number. And so what this is, is this is a collection of numbers between the lower bound and the upper bound. This number Z star is called a multiplier and it's determined by the desired confidence level. So how confident do you want to be that your interval contains the true parameter? And this number SE is the standard error of the statistic. In other words, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Uh, the product of these two numbers, Z star times SE, is called the margin of error and is sometimes denoted MOE. The idea is that a confidence interval likely contains the true value of the parameter we're trying to estimate. We refer to this probability usually as 1 minus alpha. So when a confidence interval has a 1 minus alpha times 100% probability of containing the parameter, we call it a 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval. Now that looks weird, so let me give you an example. A confidence interval that has a 90% chance of containing the parameter is called a 90% confidence interval. In this case, alpha is only 0.1 because 90% is 100 minus 10%. All right, so let's look at what a confidence interval looks like when we're trying to infer a single proportion. A one minus alpha percent confidence interval for the proportion P is given by point estimate minus the margin of error up to point estimate plus the margin of error, where the point estimate is P hat. The standard error is the square root of P hat times one minus P hat over N. And so compare that to the standard error of the sampling distribution. All right, so the reason that we're using p hats instead of p's is because we don't know what that true proportion is. So we have to estimate it using our sample proportion. Uh, the way we calculate z star is it is the one minus alpha over two th percentile of the sampling distribution. That's a little hard to say, and I'll explain it in the next slide. But we calculate z star by using the inverse norm function on our calculator. All right, so let's look at why Z star is this particular percentile of the sampling distribution. So remember that my sampling distribution for large enough N is going to be normal with a mean of my desired parameter. And basically I want to get the right parameter one minus alpha percent of the time. So I'm looking for a Z score such that I am right one minus alpha percent of the time. All right, so this area in the middle here is one minus alpha. All right, well, the sampling distribution is symmetric. So that means that half of my error alpha is on this side and the other half of my error alpha is on this side. All right, so if we add up, I've got alpha over two percent right here. I've got one minus alpha in the middle and so this Z score is Z sub one minus alpha over two. That's the one minus alpha over tooth percentile. Uh, so the way I calculate this is I use the inverse norm function of one minus alpha over two. And that's because I'm including the alpha over two area um, to the left. All right, that was a lot of 
kind of abstract information, but it's not so bad when you just sit down and do an example. So, the multi-talented Pharrell Williams has been involved in the writing or production of over 500 songs. From a random sample of 80 of his songs, 10 were either nominated for or won an award. We're going to calculate a 95% confidence interval for the true proportion of Pharrell songs that have won awards. So the first thing we're going to need is our point estimate, which is p hat, which is 10 out of 80. 80 here is, uh, is n, right? So 10 out of 80 is 0.125. All right, that's our point estimate. Our sam uh, estimated standard error is the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat all over the sample size. And it turns out that number is 0 0.037. And then to get the multiplier, this will make sense of what was on that last slide if you were a little confused by it. We want to be right 95% of the time. All right, that means alpha is 5%. So that puts 2.5% on the right tail of our distribution and 2.5% on the left tail of the distribution. We're going to add those two numbers together. So Z star is going to be the inverse norm of 0.975. And that is 1.96. So that is this z score right here. All right, so the margin of error is z star times the standard error. So 1.96 times 0 0.037, which is 0 0.0725. So the confidence interval is 0.125 minus 0.0725 up to 0.125 plus 0.0725. So those numbers are 0.0525. And 0.1975. This is our confidence interval. And so, what that tells us is that there is a 95% chance that our true parameter is between these two numbers. Our sample parameter was 12.5%, but that doesn't mean the true parameter is 12.5%. So our true parameter has a 95% chance of being in this interval. It says interpret the interval you constructed. So just to remind ourselves that interval was 0 0.0525 up to 0 0.1975. And here's the interpretation of that. This is the sentence we write when we're interpreting a confidence interval. We are 95% confident. And that has a specific meaning. When we say we're 95% confident, that means this interval has a 95% chance of containing the true proportion. We are 95% confident that between 5.25% and 19.75%, of Pharrell songs won awards. And so notice that since I'm speaking English, I multiply my uh, endpoints of my interval by 100% because that's a more natural way of talking. All right, 
Then my friend says that half of Pharrell's songs have won awards. How would I judge that claim? Well, my friend is claiming that the true proportion is 50%, which is nowhere near my confidence interval. If my friend's claim was inside my confidence interval, I would judge that it was a uh, claim that's likely to be true. But since 50% is not even close, I would say that my friend is probably wrong. Here's another example. Computer science is Stanford's most popular major. 10% of the entire undergraduate class registers for a computer science course. Suppose that a random sample of 30 computer science majors were taken and six of them were female. Construct, construct a 90% confidence interval for the proportion of female computer science majors at Stanford. All right, so once again, the first thing I need is my point estimate, which is six out of 30. 6 out of 30 is 1 fifth, or 0.2. I'm going to need my standard error, which is the square root of 0.2 times 1 minus 0.2, which is 0.8, all over the sample size, which is 30. So that standard error turns out to be 0.073. And then again, this time I'm only trying to be right 90% of the time. So my error is alpha equals 10%, half of which is on the right side and half of which is on the left side. So my multiplier is the inverse norm of 95% because I'm adding these two numbers together. That number turns out to be 1.6449. So the margin of error is 1.6449 times 0 0.073, which is 0.1201. Therefore, my confidence interval is 0.2 minus 0.1201 up to 0.2 plus 0.1201, which is 0.0799 up to 32.0101. So this is the confidence interval for the pro true proportion of female computer science majors at Stanford. All right, so the interpretation of that interval is that we are 90% confident that the true proportion of female CS majors is between, and again, I'm going to multiply by 100% because I'm speaking English now, 7.99% and 32.01%. Worth noting, this interval is not valid. Remember that in order for the central limit theorem to apply, we needed greater than 10 successes, and we only have six in this example. So even though we were able to construct the interval and talk about it, because this is just a toy example, we would not want to make any conclusions based on this interval because we did not have enough successes to use the central limit theorem. So that's always something you want to pay attention to is whether or not the central limit theorem applies given your sample size.